Okay, so here's my little video on the barcode program. And what we do in the barcode program is we just uh, count and we can either uh, take a look at the barcode and it either is something that we put into the system or take out of the system. And what I decided to do is just uh, put them into bins and make it more of a commodity. And I must have done this around the holidays because I've got the... Uh, holiday um, commodities rather than the Star Wars stuff. So anyway, uh, this is the main screen, the usual start stop, and it just tells us where we stand in there. But then our monitor, and you can see what we're doing. If we have an input, uh, we have a system feed hopper, and so it inputs stuff into um, the system, and we fill up our bin. When that gets full, bin one, then we start using bin two. When we empty it, for an output, then we take it from these bins and put it into the uh, output delivery hopper. So, um, it takes the barcode program and it becomes a little bit more complicated when we're trying to load and unload stuff. And this is just the, uh, uh, this is, well this is the load simulator and this is all the code I had. It's uh, probably overkill but uh, this is what we take to load. Um, you know, we have the usual first part, second part, third part. Those even become more complicated because you have to um, load and unload, and then you have, you know, bin one and bin two. And you have to know um, how much is available in each bin for when you're loading or unloading. So, let's see if, hopefully it won't let me down, and I'll try to... Uh, uh, let me just to be sure download it and then I'll go online. Okay, so now we should be running and if we put this in run, get back to the main screen, we can start it up. And sometimes it seems like it takes a little while, but we have nothing in the system. So we go to the monitor and right now I think I'll just put uh, well let's do 23 now what it's going to do is it's going to say okay that is part number one which we have is gold and it's an input and the quantity is 23 and this takes a very long time I'm not quite sure whether I probably have it set up wrong but uh, I was thinking sometime between the Wonderware and the emulator that it slowed it down don't know what's going on but gold is kind of the goldish color it's going to fill up the hopper to about 23 we have a maximum of 25 in the hopper so it should go almost to the top and then because there's nothing in bin one it'll fill everything in bin one and when it is done filling bin one it'll go back to the reset position and uh, we'll be able to put in a new bit of well whichever quantity and input output we want. Um, and we're going to fill them up at first just to get some quantity in each bin. And we can look at what happens with the uh, main screen. You know, we have this, uh, you know, animation is all uh, captured from the one to where these are just regular tanks um, with the barcode filler as you sh I'm sure you can recognize. So now we're back at the start point and if we want to put a few in uh, 4, 5, 6 and we'll just make it a smaller quantity so it doesn't take too long. Now when we have this um, we have frankincense. I don't know if it's purple but we're making it purple and it's input so it's going to go into bin 1 and then we'll uh, I guess we'll fill up uh, the original gold thing and get it overflowing into bin 2 and then we might uh, empty out some parts. So we can see the input section and then the output section. And I don't know how well it's even implemented at this point. Um, I kind of got it running to this point and yeah, let it fall somewhere. But the status was if we put in a wrong part number or if we put in bad direction or uh, an invalid quantity, like if we put a quantity of, you know, a hundred, it would flag it as an error or an alarm. 
So now when this is done loading up, it'll go back here. These things, you know, we showed the previous one, but if we go back to the main thing, it'll show us the quantity in each of the bins. So if we go and we'll try to load up the gold, and we might as well load it to its maximum value, which is 25 again. Seem like that wanted to take the enter. And there are little odd glitches. And I'm not sure if when you just click on these things, whether you it really gets captured. I mean, it should. Um, but I've noticed that it doesn't always get it. When we have those enters, it goes through a one shot. And it should capture it. But I'm not sure if there's some... Uh, talking between the programs that it doesn't always see that when you click on it really quick. Now this is 25 and it shows exactly a full um, level that's going to go into the bin. And what we'll do is we'll just, after this is done unloading, we'll load a little more into bin 1 so it overflows into bin 2 and then we'll empty some out of the uh, gold containers. And each of these bins, we have them a uh, fill level of up to 50. And now, I'm not certainly not going to have any of the students try anything this elaborate, but one of the things I wanted to do for the barcode, and I was thinking of doing, is rather than just have them enter it one at a time, is just give them a file. And just have them keep track of, uh, and for now we'll just, because um, right now we should be at 47, so we'll put it to an even 60 between the two. Well, we're at 48, I guess. So we'll be at 61 between the two bins. Now, when we fill up this bin, um, because we want to be efficient, it'll take a look and say, well, 13 is too much for this guy. He can only have two. So it's going to stop at bin two. Um, first, and it's going to pour 11 in bin two, and then it'll put the last two in bin one and fill that up. And going back to what I was saying for what I think might want to do with students is just have them have a file that has 50 continuous barcodes and just have them go through the sequence and just give me a number. Okay, uh, gold has this much, frankincense has this much, and uh, just give me an answer. What is the final tally? Now, of course, there'll be um, incorrect part numbers. There'll be, uh, you know, incorrect directions. So if they have a simple equation, so this one got 11, and this will get 2. So if they have a simple equation that says, uh, you know, if it's, not, if it's not input, it must be output, well, that could be wrong because if this number is like 10 or 9, it's neither. So they have to put in additional logic. Now, if we go to the main menu, so it says that bin 1 is full and that bin 2 has something in it. Now it says you can move this to storage, but we also say wait till it's over half full. Um, but what we're going to do right now is empty some out of uh, our gold bins to uh, watch what that happens. So we're going to empty out, let's say, a full 25. And that'll get code 2. And now, since it's emptying, it's going to be this bottom little uh, bin. Now, again, to be efficient, it's going to empty out as much as it can. And we're going 25, so it'll empty out 14 from bin 1, and then it'll take the last 11 from bin 2. And so 11 will be totally empty by the time we're finished. And um, that way, bin 2 is always just uh, for the overflow. And there's also a thing that when you do have it, if you wanted to, uh, and we'll show it on the uh, chart when this is done, and I think I'll put some in the uh, final container so we can see that they all fill. Um, and they do that pretty well and pretty consistent. But there is a way that if this is full and this is almost getting full that you can, uh, from the main menu, you can just shove it to the side and it'll keep track of total boxes that you've accumulated throughout uh, your uh, production session or whatever we want to call it. 
So now it's just emptied everything into the delivery hopper. And when it gets back to normal, we'll put some in the final column. And so this will be 789 as its part number. And this is our mer. Oop. Well, it's going to count out to negative 11 because I forgot to change the uh, direction that we're going. So there's a bugaboo in the program, that's for sure. So anyway, we're just going to go back. And if we look at the main program, see what we have. This has a quantity of minus 11 right now. And so now we're loading it back up with the 11, and hopefully it'll go back to 0. Um, going to have to do some additional logic with that guy. But, uh, you know, it really doesn't uh, matter that much. Um, that's why we write the programs, right? So we can find out these bugs. So when we go back here, the final tally hopefully is going to be zero, but uh, we can go back to the main routine. And so this one has zero because we emptied it and then we refilled it again. Um, this has 12, this has 36. But when we overflow, we can see it's in bin two. And then if we wanted to, we could, um, when it is at full, we can click on this and then it'll move it to uh, the uh, full bins and then it'll transfer bin two to bin one and then come up with an empty bin two. Um, or at least that's what it's supposed to do. Anyway, that's a little quick uh, demo of what we got. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.